So now we're going to move to the Gracie Curettes. And as you know, the Gracie Curettes have a high and low blade. And we're going to sharpen the working blade, which is going to be the low blade. So you need to identify where the low blade is. And so you're going to turn, in this case, now I'm going to start with the toe in my direction. And again, I'm going to start out at 90 degrees, holding my instrument in a palm grasp and then open to 110, start in the posterior or the, the um, back third, then the middle, the heel third, a better term, and then the toe third or terminal third. Hear that sound? And, and then you wanna just gently roll the stone around the toe so you maintain the integrity of the curve of the toe. And then on the other end, now my lower third is gonna um, cause me to turn my toe away from me, so I'm gonna hold it down so I can look down into the face. 90, 110. 1-2 and uh, we're going to do a couple of the posteriors. You know that there are, are a variety of Gracie instruments so I've got a few selections here. So now I've moved to the uh, Gracie 1314 which is a uh, distal instrument. I'm going to look for the low cutting edge and here it is and because it's a posterior instrument now I have to again look for the lower third of the shank which is gonna cause my handle not to be straight up and down and parallel, but it's gonna come out to an angle. And again, find the 90 degree on my stone with the cutting edge and then open to 110. So I moved from heel to middle to toe. going to do the opposite end. Look for the lower third. So now I've got to turn my toe away from me. My handle again is, is um, cockeyed and my lower third of the shank is parallel to the stone. Start at 90 and open to 110. So through all of uh, this procedure, the instrument is not moving while I'm sharpening, just the stone. And you hear that sound? Sound of sharpness. Okay. Now I'm going to move to the um, 1516, which is a um, mesial instrument, Gracie, and I'm going to find the lower third. I just tend to start with my toe toward me, just a little idiosyncrasy, and I find the lower third of the um, shank. Now my handle is going cockeyed. I start at 90, and then open to 110, heel, and middle. So, which I didn't mention before, I am propping my elbow against my body when my toe is away from me, and when my toe is toward me, I'm propping my elbow against um, the countertop, just for support, so that my instrument does not move. And now, um, I'm moving to the um, 1718, and 
this one has a lot of bend in it. So I'm going to look for the lower third of the shank and my handle is really going to be bent. So I'm going to find the low cutting edge. Okay. And start with my lower third of the shank parallel to my stone or perpendicular to the floor. Then start at 90 and then open to 110. And I'm using gentle pressure. I'm not using heavy pressure. I'm going to flip into the other end. 90, 110. 1-2 and the Columbia 1314. And as you remember, the um, universals have two cutting edges. They're paired ended instruments, so we're going to do it the same way. We're going to find the lower third of the shank because it's a posterior instrument. Your handle is going to be um, cockeyed. And we're going to start at the heel third, 90 degrees, open to 110. Middle, 90, 110, and then toe, 90, 110. So notice how small the movement is to go from 90 to 110. And now I'm going to do the opposite cutting edge. So I turn my toe away from me and I hold it down where I can look over my stone and onto the face. 90, 110. in the middle, and now the toe, 90, 110, and again, round the toe slightly, and I'm going to flip it, and do the opposite, so I find the lower third of the shank, and now my handle is going the opposite direction, 90, 110, so I'm starting at the heel, middle, 90, 110, You always want to place your stone at those different areas on each of the instruments because of the curvature of the uh, cutting edge or the, the uh, working end. Now we're going to move to the last instrument which is the Columbia 1314 which it is very similar to the uh, Barnhart 1-2 if you turn all the curves in the same direction. You see the same instrument except for the Barnhart 1-2 has a longer and thinner shank where the Columbia 1314 is a little bit thicker. They both um, are used exactly the same way. Um, it tends to be personal preference. So now we're going to go to the Columbia 1314. Same thing. I'm going to 